All I can say is, be careful who you throw bagels at. Let's take a look at and break down the ending of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. You know that absolutely hilarious moment in the theater when everyone who didn't do their research prior freaks out at the words, to be continued? However, if you did do your research, then you'd know that less than one year later, Beyond the Spider-Verse would be dropping in theaters just the same. Do so you stay till the end of the credits only to learn there was no extra scene? However, there was plenty of content to be found in the end of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Starting, of course, with our main character, Miles Morales. We learned a lot about Miles through this second installment in the Spider-Verse franchise. Besides having grown a few inches, Miles is very similar to where we last left him. Rocky relationship with his parents and trying to balance being Spider-Man at the same time while missing his multi-dimensional friends. When one shows back up, he takes a trip into the multiverse and may have just thrown the balance of the fabric of reality into question. It turns out that this Miles Morales is much more important to the multiverse than we may have originally thought. At first, it would seem that he just happens to be in the universe where a villain invented a super collider that began the breaking of the multiverse. However, it turns out that in all these universes connected by the presence of a Spider-Man, Miles is the original anomaly. It turns out that the spider that bit Miles Morales that gave him his powers was not actually from his own dimension, Earth 1610. No, in fact, that spider was from Earth 42. We find out that had that spider not been transported, Miles would have never been bitten. The Peter Parker of that universe would have destroyed the Super Collider and lived. It is for this reason that Miles winds up on Earth 42 at the end of the film. Spider-Man 2099's machine that transports people back to their own dimensions read his DNA and found traces of the spider venom from Earth-42, sending him to a world where Spider-Man didn't exist, because the spider that created him was transported out of it. In the absence of a Spider-Man, evil rose. Instead of Miles' Uncle Aaron dying in this universe, it was actually his father, Jefferson Davis, the captain of the police force. Now left to be raised by his caring yet somewhat morally questionable uncle, Miles instead of becoming Spider-Man adopts the moniker, The Prowler. Now trapped in this universe with an alternate version of his uncle and himself, Miles has to stop his evil twin from infiltrating his own universe, likely to reunite with his father, which as we learn throughout the film can cause the destruction of that entire world. Arguably a co-main character of this second installment, we learned a great deal about Gwen Stacy as well. Gwen lived a lonely life. After causing the death of her friend and being alienated from her father as a criminal, she turned to some new mentors who walked through a hole in space-time. Joining an elite force of spider people across the multiverse, Gwen's feelings towards Miles eventually drove her back to him. Now able to travel the multiverse, Gwen accidentally allowed Miles to do the same thing. However, the longer she stayed with this elite group, the less she seems to trust them. By the end of the film, Gwen is cast aside by Spider-Man 2099 and sent back to her own dimension. After returning, she learns that her father not only retired from the police force, but realized he loved his daughter after all. However, with a little help from a fellow rebel, she finds a way back to Miles' universe. After learning that he was sent to Earth-42 instead of Earth-1610, she begins to rally the troops. Gwen forms a team of spider people who also believe that Spider-Man 2099 has crossed the line just too far into villainy, all wrestling with the moral question of watching as people die so that the universe can live on. Believing that Miguel O'Hara has lost sight of what it means to be the good guy, Gwen gathers some familiar faces. She rallies a team consisting of characters from this film, as well as several from the previous one. Joining her are Spider-Punk, Spider-Bite, Spider-Man from Moombatten, Peter B. Parker and his new daughter Mayday, and we see the return of Penny Parker, Spider-Man Noir, and Peter Porker. Together, this team plans to rescue Miles from the evil alternate version of himself, so that they can all go stop the true villain of the film, while reminding some of their spider friends just exactly who they fight for. Now we have a sharp-toothed, sharp-clawed, grumpy Spider-Man to attend to. Miguel O'Hara leads a complicated mission. He at one point learned the secret of multiversal travel, given that he is from the future in a city called Nueva York. He found all of these different universes where different spider people exist, including ones that contain different versions of himself. He found one where he had a family, and after witnessing his own death, he decided to take that version's place. This upset what was called a canon moment, similar to an absolute point in time. In that universe, Miguel O'Hara 
O'Hara was meant to die. His family meant to grieve and move on, but by denying them that experience, Miguel accidentally unraveled the entire fabric of that universe, and watched as it completely faded from existence. He vowed never to let this happen again, and started a multiversal team of spider people hell-bent on making sure that what happened to his ideal universe could not happen to others. It's a sad gig, but he and Jess Drew, along with seemingly thousands of other Spider-Men, have to ensure that certain deaths occur in certain universes so that those universes don't become unstable and collapse. It's why Gwen tries to stop Miles from saving someone in Moombatten. It's also why Miguel O'Hara cannot let Miles leave. As the original anomaly, Miles has too much information, and through his desire to do good, Miguel knows he could accidentally wipe out several universes. The thread throughout these universes is often a police captain close to the Spider-Man of that universe meeting their untimely death. Putting two and two together, Miles realizes that his father is about to be promoted to captain. And thanks to a glimpse into the future from the movie's villain, Miles knows that this will happen soon, and he wants to try to do everything to prevent it. Miguel O'Hara and the entire Spider Force try to stop him, but he actually escapes their grasp. Miguel, furious with rage, kicks Gwen Stacy off the team, and forcibly reminds the rest of the Spider people that they are the good guys, no matter how things may seem. So, while Miles tries to escape from an alternate universe version of himself and get back to his own universe, so he can stop the death of his father, Miguel O'Hara, Jess Drew, and so many others are hell-bent on stopping him for what they believe is the betterment of the multiverse. With unlimited resources at his back, Miles and Gwen along with their team certainly have multiple different people to watch their backs for. Now, onto the film's villain. Dr. Jonathan Owen is a scientist who you would have missed if you blinked watching Into the Spider-Verse. He worked at Alchemax, and it turns out he was the first one to make a real breakthrough on tapping into the multiverse. Alongside Kingpin and Dr. Olivia Octavius, it was Jonathan Owen who successfully transported the spider that gave Miles his power. Coincidentally, Dr. Jonathan Owen was also in the room when Miles destroyed the large super collider he had helped create. This accident turned Dr. Owen into the spot. Due to these events, the Spot believes himself to be Miles' greatest nemesis in terms of the multiverse. When we first see him, that's laughable at best, as he can't even successfully rob an ATM. However, as the film goes on, the Spot learns how to increase his power and actually develops the ability to travel the multiverse without any technology. He quickly begins traveling to different universes, gaining the attention of the multiversal Spider Force. He goes to different versions of Alchemax and absorbs the energy produced by their colliders. And by the end of the film, let's just say the Spot could do much more than rob a convenient store. After traveling to multiple dimensions, the Spot has absorbed the multidimensional energy from an untold amount of colliders. He has changed his base color from white to pitch black, insinuating that he himself has become an interdimensional being. The Spot's whole mission is to become powerful enough to defeat Miles Morales. After the accident, Dr. Jonathan Owen lost his family and everything he cared about, and not to mention his face. By the end of the film, the Spot has become possibly the most dangerous villain any of the Spider-Men in any of the universes has ever faced. Now, if you stayed at least till the mid-credits, you wouldn't find a new scene, but instead a new trope, the promise that someone will return. Beyond the Spider-Verse promises to be an exciting third installment to what could be an incredible trilogy. But just what can we expect to see in Beyond the Spider-Verse? Following our main character, there's a couple of things he will have to do. The first will be the ultimate metaphor any hero has to go through in fighting an evil version of themselves. Miles will have to decide after likely being saved by Gwen and all of his old friends, what to do with the Miles of Earth-42. After all, he's a villain who has gained so much power in the absence of a Spider-Man, does he kill him? Or does he try and sway him and Uncle Aaron back to the side of good? Gwen, Miles, Gwen's team will then have to go face the Spot. The Spot has become so powerful that Miles cannot hope to defeat him alone. I'm sure some form of Miles' new power of being able to absorb energy will come into play when it comes to defeating the Spot. It may take every single Spider-Person across the multiverse to defeat the power that the Spot has gained. And I do mean all of them. We got several hints that the live-action Spider-Men are included in the Spider-Verse. We visited Venom's universe, the Amazing Spider-Man universe, we saw clips from Tobey Maguire's days, and we all know that those connect to the MCU, so there's no telling who could show up. After that, I believe we will be in the end game, where Miles has to make the ultimate decision of watching his father die or stopping it, thus putting his own universe in jeopardy. I'm sure Miguel O'Hara and Jess will try to stop him. Despite everything he's been through, Miguel O'Hara may need to find just a little bit of trust left in Miles. 
just like all the other spider people had to do in Into the Spider-Verse, and that Miles had to do in himself. I believe he will save his dad, and somehow the entire Spider-Force will have to find a way to save his universe. Luckily, when you have a talking pig, a hologram, a punk rocker, and a detective from the 1930s on your team, I don't think the box even exists. And there you have it. Miles Morales is in trouble. Gwen is off to save him, and Miguel is forced to wrestle with his duty versus his heart. Did we miss anything? What clues did you get from the ending of Across the Spider-Verse?